just want to do a little demonstration of how I am currently trying to make um, custom personality chips for uh, the droids from Galaxy's Edge. The setup that I have here is I've got this program here called Dext. It's free. You can go and download it and run it on your computer. And it's a it simulates the Yamaha DX7 synthesizer, I believe. If there are a lot of um, patches or carts or I don't know what you want to call them out there that you can find on the internets that you can then put into this and they simulate different instruments or noises or all sorts of different things there are literally millions of options and you can make your own too um, but I'm not going to go into making different instruments here I'm just going to talk about using this quick and dirty so on the screen you see there's a keyboard layout down here at the bottom you can press individual keys with your mouse and you can see in this instance i have uh, this bounce currently set we can try different ones and again this is just a few of probably a thousand or so of these things I have. And first thing I want to do is find something that sounds a little electronic -y, a little droidish, and that's where uh, whatever the heck it was I was just on that I've completely forgotten now. Is that it? Is it bouncing? Yeah. So that might work. So I've selected that. You can also go through here and go through all the different instruments in the cart. Okay, uh, so you could use your mouse here and create noises. You can also use your keyboard. The, the, uh, the ASDF row are the white keys, the Q W E R T Y row are the black keys. Or the setup that I have here is I went on Amazon and picked up this uh, little MIDI keyboard. It's got like, I don't know, there's 30 keys, 32 keys. And um, it's a USB device. You plug it into your computer. It doesn't make sound on its own. It It's a MIDI keyboard. The sound is produced by something else that takes those MIDI commands and turns them into music, such as Dext, so now I can just punch away at the, the uh, keyboard here, the MIDI keyboard, and uh, I can make sounds. I can even use it, uh, the little MIDI keyboard I have includes this uh, pitch thing, so I can do weird things like this. That's kind of cool, and I can even change the octaves. In fact, that sounds kind of interesting. But for a droid, you probably want something a little higher pitched. Higher pitched noises tend to traverse more easily through um, objects. So what if we went really high pitched here? Uh, See, so it gets a little too plinky plonky. I'm going to go with that for now. So let's say that's what I'm going to use. That's my voice for my droid. Okay, so now I need to record it. And I will use... Where are you? There you are. This is Audacity. Again, another free program that you can go out and download and run on your computer. And I've got it set up so that it will record basically the, the from the uh, audio output on my computer. So I can hit record here start playing stuff and now I have an audio recording to play with so basically what my work has been doing my work what I've been doing is basically hitting record and then for a couple of minutes just poking away at the keyboard and trying different things and uh, you know, leaving like a three or four second pause between each thing so I, I can see when I look at the waveform here in Audacity where different sounds break so I know where to trim them later. So I'll show you. We'll do a couple here. So 
Again, this is just poking at random. And sometimes uh, things will work and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's like, eh, hey, you know what, I don't. I'll give up and I'll try a different uh, sound from uh, Dex. Uh, I find if I'm just poking at the keyboard, the MIDI keyboard with my uh, fingers, that if I stay in the same general area, you know, a few, just a few keys, uh, that seems to work best. Whereas if you spread it out, then it sounds maybe a little bit weird. Or maybe not that it would have been too bad, but you get the idea. So now, let's say I wanted to make this my personality chip. Well, now what I'm going to do is actually open up a second copy of Audacity here. What is that? Control N, I think. Yes. And when you're making personality chip audio clips, they need to be at 12,000 hertz. So when you save them, you didn't see that, but down here at the bottom, you set your project rate at 12,000 hertz. If you don't do that, it won't work. So now I can come into, we can close, we can get rid of Dext. I've got my audio here. So let's take this, and I'll just grab that. Control X to cut it, bring it over here to paste it. And if that looks good, I can hit Control Shift E to export it. It will export it as a WAV file. I think you can also just do this, export audio. And that will save it as a 12,000 hertz WAV file that you can then bring into um, the batch converter for General Plus. So let's go through that real quick. So Control Shift E. Oh, there we go. Save it as a sound. This comes up. Don't need to enter anything over here. We can just click through that. I'm done with my first one. Come over here, grab my second one, paste it. Control Shift E. Give it another number or what, however you want to name it. The name of the audio file does not matter at all. Control X. Control V. Control Shift E. All right, so now I have some audio files uh, to work with. So now we can bring in this utility here called G Plus Gadget. Uh, this is from General Plus. This is the company that makes the audio controller that is in the droids. You can go, you can, uh, go on their website, General Plus. Where is it? Gen yeah, GeneralPlus.com, I think. And you can download this. Um, it has you two utilities that we care about. It has an audio batch converter and a file merger. The batch converter is going to convert the audio that we just created into the format that the audio controller in the droid needs. And then file merger will let us organize and pack all the uh, sound together into one file that we can then put onto the personality chip. So I'll bring in here the batch converter. And it's just a matter of going into the file, finding where you put all your audio files, and open them up. And we can see they, it identifies the sample rate as 12,000 hertz, which it needs to be. Good. The other thing is the algorithm needs to be set at A3400 Pro 5-bit. And make sure you have an output directory selected, and then hit Start Encoding. That's it. We are all set. That is all you need for batch converting the audio clips. Now we'll bring in the file merger utility here. And it looks a little daunting at first. No worries though. On the left here, we set the uh, directory where the uh, encoded files are. And we can just add them over here to this side. Uh, first, we want to add a few groups. Um, for creating personality chips. Personality chips need to have 12 groups. So I'm just going to call them 
1 through 12. And the type needs to be speech. And that's it. So we can just add a file to that, add another group, call it 2, type speech, and so on. And I won't do them all, but you get the idea. So then you can just, you can drag and, can you drag and drop? Maybe not. Well, I'll just double click on the left. They appear on the right. And then you can drag and drop and organize uh, the clips as you want. That's it. And then when you're all done, when you're ready, you have, you have to make the, uh, the file. So we want to come down here to the bottom right. And we want to make sure we're at version 2, 8-byte head. Series is GPCD9T. Everything else can stay the same. Now over here, we can actually specify um, the personality chip ID and the uh, affiliation ID if we would like. Uh, the first byte here should be 01 or 02. Every personality chip I've seen is 01 except for the black personality chip which has a value of 02. I don't know what the significance of that value is. It could be a version number. I'm not sure, but I'll just leave it as 1. That seems to work. All right, the next thing is we need to specify the chip ID. Now, I believe the values of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, I think it is, are valid for the existing personality chips. Um, you could try and mimic one if you wanted, uh, just so you know values that work. That isn't going to confuse your droid. Or you could try and add your own. But in this case, we'll just mimic the, uh, I think it's the blue personality chip, which is has a chip ID of 3. So I'm going to put a 3 there. So it's 0, 1, and it followed by three, set, uh, three pairs of zeros. Then 0, 3, your chip ID. And then another pair of zeros. Put 0, 3 again. The chip ID goes in twice. Then a pair of zeros. And then the affiliation ID. Uh, 1 is scoundrel. 5 is resistance and nine is first order um, I believe you could probably tweak those values too if you wanted you could we could do something like say let's just go for it because this is just a demo actually I'm going to show you what I know will work and that's it you've just set your chip ID your affiliation I believe that's a version number I wouldn't worry about it, but now you're all set. So all we have to do now is create the file. Now, this file, if I were to create it right now and put it on a chip, it wouldn't work. You need 12 groups, and they need to have something in each of the groups, um, except for, I think, uh, group 10. It's I, I should prepare before I do these videos. <laughs> um, but anyways. Uh, so just keep that in mind that this, if I were to put it on a chip right now, wouldn't work because I need more audio clips. I really should have about 20, 20 to 30 audio clips um, for personality chip. That's about what the stock personality chips have. If you have a bigger um, memory chip and you're willing to put in the extra effort to do 50 or even 100 clips, go right ahead. It'll totally work. Um, but then you, you're all done. All I have to do here now, oh, we can set up here where we want the encoded files to go, or the, uh, the ROM file to go. Destination file, demo.bin. Hit merge. And that's it. So now we can go and uh, if we uh, if I bring up this, you can see the directory where all the files are, and you can see there is the bin file that we created. It's only 114 uh, kilobytes. Uh, typical personality chips usually run about a megabyte in size. So now I'll bring in this as a little hex editor, and I can drag and drop this over, and we can see the contents of our ROM, and there it is. And if you look, that. Uh, those bytes down here, 0, or 20, and 30, they correspond to bytes uh, 2, 0, and 3, 0. Those are hexadecimal values, not 
the actual value is uh, what is that 32 and uh, 48 my ability to convert hex in my head is not strong <laughs> but there are the values that we added in there and there's that second row full of zeros just like we have in the file merger utility here and this is it this is ready to be burned to a uh, personality chip so that's my process, that's what I'm doing, that's how I'm creating these personality chips, and then it's just a matter of burning them to a chip, putting it on the uh, on a PCB, sticking it in the droid, and magic happens.